Germany 2, Hungary nil. And shout out to Mr. Ilkay Gundogan because that that was a masterful performance. Um, shout out to everyone as well who was with us on TikTok. We were live on TikTok and there was one comment that we actually took a photo of and I was like, I need to talk about this. So, um, uh, Abdul, Abdul Talks Football has been with us on every single live. This is what he said. Gundo was my man of the match. Performance was clean touches on the ball, off the ball, great runs, vision, and weight of pass. Aye! And then puts fire emojis. Shout out to Abdul. Has watched every single game with us. And that's exactly what Gundo did. That's exactly how he was. He was everywhere on this field. Again, uh, I said this in the, in the prediction. Havertz allows the two guys to really go forward. That is uh, Vertz and um, Musiala to really just go forward, run past him and do everything. But Gundogan is underrated because he not only does that, he comes short, he goes to the wing, he comes to the left, he comes to the right, he goes to every single place. And it's just a masterclass in how to play football, let alone play as an attacking midfielder, right? At age of 32 when everyone thinks he's done or washed because he moved to um, Barcelona, this guy just keeps showing like his class. And it's the elder statesmen who are being class in this team because Tony Cruz is also another one who was just on another level. Like he was, like he moves, he just glides. He doesn't look like, he, he never looks like he's laboring. He presses just when he needs to. Um, he knows where to be basically. Like he's just a smart footballer all around. So that combination of him and Andrich in, in midfield Seems to be working so far. Seems to be working well. Uh, Musiala didn't get so many chances to attack the team. I think Havertz was, by his standards, he was a bit poor today. Like, he wasn't uh, the normal player that we're used to, the high standards that he holds himself to, especially while playing up front. Uh, the, touches, the touches were just, his first touch was a bit off. Like, it was just a bunch of things. But the thing about Havertz is, if he doesn't give you those things, like, he will always give you a 10 out of 10 performance in terms of, in terms of context. In terms of running into space, create let let letting other players get the space to do what they need to, you know. So the space creation, that's his best attribute, his best quality. He does that better than anyone. He is a very good player in terms of uh, understanding space. But anyway, uh, Florian Vaz today as well was a bit disappointing. He had a nifty moves here and there. But what I would say is that's not so much what they did, but more of what Hungary did. They watched what Scotland uh how Scotland, how open Scotland were against the Germans. And they were like, we're not going to allow any space to those number eight. So if you look at the spaces that <coughs> Vats, Musiala, and Havertz were getting against Scotland, they were not getting them here. They were not, the three of them were not getting them here. Vats was okay. He wasn't bad. Um, uh, Musiala was just above average. Havertz was below average. But that allows for the rest of the team to shine because now Miss Mittelstadt was actually getting spaces to run a bit more, into the opposition half. He was really bombing forward, which we didn't see in the previous game. So again, shout out to Nagelsmann, the coach, because it's a matter of reading, reading the opposition. And first half, he wasn't doing it. Middlesbrough wasn't doing it that much. Second half, he was doing it. It's like, I've read the opposition. I've seen what they're doing and we've adjusted. We still keep our phone three guys narrow, but we let Gundogan do his thing, run into those areas. Now, Middlesbrough is attacking a bit more. Kimik is now inverting. And there were times... Rudiger was even playing, like, he's the centre-back, but he moves all the way to the right side, like, covering, like, sort of what uh, Ben White would do for Arsenal, right? Like, you, yes, he plays in a back four, or when you're attacking, it's a back three. But when we have the ball, he's moving all the way up front, right? When we're really press uh, pressuring in the um, final third, opponent's final third. So, yeah, this today I need to give a big shout-out to the coach because this felt like a very tactical game. There were moments, this game had moments in the game. For example... This, it had moments that felt really crucial. For example, in the first minute, the chance that came to Shaloy. Shaloy is a baller. Number 24, Hungary. Baller, baller. Noya saw it early. He managed to come out and uh, kick the ball away. Because if he gets that ball and he scores it, that entire game becomes... It becomes a banana skin game, right? Because now if it's like one, you're one nil down at home, pressure is on. Um, another big moment was uh, Neuer's save when it was 1-0. Neuer had this save where um, he really just... Like, he has he has those moments in his... We all we all think, like, he's watched... Testegen is a very good goalkeeper. If Testegen started this, any of these games, we'd not fault uh, the coach even one bit because we believe Testegen is that good. But Neuer always just does one or two things every other time to remind you, yo, I'm still here, I'm still around. And... Yeah, saves don't come any more crucial than that, you know. Um, 
Uh, Varga also had a few chances. The Hungarian striker, but he blazed it. Actually, the one good chance he had, he blazed it over. And Germany just really, really, what they were just they were just clinical when they needed to be. It was a chess game. The coach was good when he needed to be. Um, good again was good when he needed to be. It's one of those professional performances, all in all. Um, and Gundo capped it off with a good goal, a really good goal actually. Uh, Tony Cruz gets the ball somewhere in midfield, then lays it off to I think it was Musiala. Musiala gives it to Middlestad on the wing. Everyone is now running because they're expecting the cross. Middlestad had crossed two balls that went straight into the D. So that's why the defenders all went in because his his quality of crossing is actually he's actually a quality crosser. Let me say that. So when he did the 45, it kind of caught everyone off, off guard. And that's just where the smarts and the wits, the wits, I've called it wits because of Florian Wits, the wits of Ilkay Gudogan to just drop back and slot it in the bottom corner. And that goal was the one that sealed the game. So, yeah, Gundogan was just really, really good today. Like, I have I have nothing to say about, uh, bad about Gundogan. Um, who else scored today? <laughs> Um, 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 why am I forgetting the first goal? Guys, I'm feeling a bit unwell, so I'm just trying to like do this thing and uh, not disappoint you guys because we have to be here. Oh, Musiala, of course. Musiala got the first goal and Ilkay is one who got the assist for that goal as well. Um, so yeah, Ilkay was, was, was everywhere. Musiala, I think, is the first player to get to two goals in the tournament. He's also proving to be such, such a great, great... I, I don't want to say a bargain because he's his, but... He, he could have been English. He could have played for another club. You know, he's now he's at Bayern, he's Germany. That's England's loss is Germany's gain. So, yeah, all in all, Germany, great performance. And um, for Hungary, in as much they've lost this one 2-0, they lost 3-1 in their first game, so that's minus four. If they win against Scotland, they are still in with a shout of making round of 16 because it's their four best number threes. And, um, yeah, Germany, great win. Professional through round of 16. Now we're waiting for Scotland versus Switzerland. Peace.